Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where two movies enter and one too many of them leave. I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my lovely co-host. Hello, I'm Babe. Don't you dare fucking call me that, though. <laughs> Babe the Pig? Ba- yeah. That's my favorite movie, so I just named my entire channel after that. Babe Fan 489. I'm also, I also go by Mackle. Anyways... Got a lovely, lovely pair up today. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 90s comic book girls in the post-apocalypse. I mean, 90s movies, I guess. I don't know when these comics came out. I think Tank Girl started in the late 80s. I could not tell you when Barbed Wire was published. But both of these movies are from the 90s. They're both based on comic books, and they're both women in the post-apocalypse. Yep. Would you like to start us off with our first movie, Michael? Oh, are we starting with Barbed Wire? Yes, we're starting with Barbed Wire. Okay. Um, We watched them out of order this time. Barbed Wire is a 1996 comic book movie directed by David Hogan, and it's based off the Dark Horse Comics character of the same name. It stars Pamela Anderson, which, based on the comments that we got on that poll, is either a turn-off or a turn-on for you. Um, She did win a Razzie for this movie. Uh, for the people who said it was a big okay. turnoff, uh, not as worst actress, but as the like as a new star, like she was new to the scene with this movie, so re- really trying to crush Pamela Anderson's heart with that award. God, uh, don't don't let me get on my soapbox about the Razzies. Although <laughs> Pamela Anderson's tits were nominated for worst screen couple, which I gotta say I disagree with. They were the best part of the movie. <laughs> uh that's probably the people who liked um who said it was like a good thing that she was in the movie that's probably where they're coming from too uh it essentially takes the beloved classic casablanca and tries to modernize it for a lack of a better term instead of taking place in a foreign country it takes place in the united states during it's like either a second civil war or a war, world war three whatever you want to call it you have a ton of similarities to the pop plot of casablanca it is basically a retelling but like you know instead of like a middle-aged man and like a really old film aesthetic it's more like 90s and it's like punk girl um so it's very tone wise it's nothing like casablanca but it's going with a lot of the same plot beats um like she owns a nightclub and she's very cold-hearted and she's closed off, although you learn she does have a good heart as well and is willing to help people. There's an old love interest that comes back into her life, but that person is married now. And they're trying to get her to help them because uh, them, she's the only one who can. And she's trying to avoid helping them. And she's trying to show up the selfish side. There's like a chief of police who's like incredibly sleazy. And he's very similar to the French officer in Casablanca. Just really, it's just, it really is just taking that film's plot aside from, like, the last, like, aside from the climax. I'd say the climax is very different. Until you get to the last two minutes where they just copy the plane sequence. Well, it is an action movie, and Casablanca was not really an action movie. Yeah, they're, they're, but, like, excluding the fight scenes, it is kind of doing the exact same story. It's just like, let's throw in Foyd and... Um, you know, you do have little side missions where at the very beginning of the movie, like she is at her club and then she's like, oh, I got to go somewhere. Then she goes in the place, you know, she goes out, gets the one guy to come back as if she's like a prostitute. And then she, there's like a big shootout in that apartment. Yeah. As far as, uh, bizarre translations of Casablanca, gotta say it's better than Food Fight. It's much better than Food Fight. And I never saw Barbed Wire. Before food, uh, before Casablanca, I did watch Casablanca and Barbed Wire on the same day, and I saw Food Fight, at least most of it, before fucking Casablanca, which is a shame. Uh, I think I saw it before I saw Casablanca too, so you're not alone yeah. in that. I have a hard time getting into old cinema, but just off, just because it's, uh, you know, because it's this movie is very clearly taken a lot from that movie. I will say, I, I think it was fucking outstanding, Casablanca. I have a hard time getting into older movies like that, uh, but uh, that is definitely as good as people build it up to be. I really, really enjoyed it, and then watching Barbed Wire was uh, less enjoyable for me. But I feel like me and you this time around have a uh, different opinions on the movies we're talking about. Um, 
Maybe. Uh, I. It's kind of interesting to watch this on the same day as Casablanca because it, it has <laughs> been a little while since I've seen Casablanca, but I I did absolutely pick up on like okay that it's after like the first twenty minutes like the first twenty minutes I feel like are kind of trying to be their own thing and then it's like okay here's the plot mm-hmm. of Casablanca. Yeah, and there's, like, little details they take, too. Like, at the very beginning of Casablanca, there's the one guy who has, like, you know, basically murdered, I think it's two German soldiers, and he has the transits, and he ends up getting arrested. But but that's kind of what instigates the, like, you know, instigates the Germans to come over to Casablanca. At least I think I'm getting the plot right here. <laughs> um, and then in a Barbed Wire, what is it, like, two police officers are killed? Yeah, two undercover, and that's kind of what inst. Yeah, and that kind of instigates shit. It's just like little details like that are thrown in. You know, the contact lenses are basically the same thing as the transits in this movie. Um, Oh, that's not a little thing, but yeah, it's just. uh, And then there's other things they're just not subtle about at all. (laughs) No, (laughs) like when when Barbara and her ex lover kind of rekindle, like it's like. To one minute of not liking each other, then one minute of making out on the elevator while <laughs> Casablanca has that go throughout the entire movie to, you know, properly build it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the comparisons to Casablanca are, like, the most immediately obvious thing about this movie. It is the most interesting part to me, because I will say, even though it is copying the story, I don't want to call it a blatant ripoff either, because tonally it is different enough to where you can say it's a retelling. It, it'd be like saying, like, you know, Lion King is a ripoff of Hamlet, where I feel like, no, it's changing up enough, and it tonally I don't, it's different enough. I don't think Lion King has, like, anything to fucking common, or Macbeth, it's Macbeth, that people compare it to. I don't see it. I don't know what people are talking about. It's nothing like... People? No, not Macbeth. No, yeah, you're right. It was Hamlet. I was, yeah. I'm getting my Shakespeare plays confused. It's nothing like Hamlet. Like, the only similarity yeah, it, it has to Hamlet is, like, the dead father coming back as a ghost. Uh, if you want to say that, then compare it to the sequel, then, because Lion King 2 does Romeo and Juliet. Okay, yeah. But everyone <laughs> does Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet's a really obvious story to retell. Even if you even if you want to say that you don't think it's anything like Hamlet, the people who made the sequel and the behind the scenes literally said, uh, yeah, the first one was based off of Hamlet, so we wanted to make the sequel based off their um, Shakespeare's second most famous story. Uh, and it's like, yeah, they were definitely trying to be like Hamlet. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's as similar as people make it out to be. But that's a discussion for another day. Uh, yes. <laughs> barbed Wire, very similar to Casablanca. Uh, but yeah, more so, I would say. Yeah, uh, definitely tonally different. It's very noiry, like it's it's mm-hmm. shot like a noir film, which is kind of odd because Casablanca is not really noir, although it it stars Humphrey Bogart, who was sort of the noir king. Yeah. So he had a perfect voice for that. Yeah, I I kind of get why they're they're going for a noirish look to this. You know, like, f- dystopian future noir. Um, yeah. I think we should talk about the cast. Um, of course, stars Pamela Anderson, who is credited in the film as Pamela Anderson Lee, as this came during her very loving marriage to not controversial at all, uh, Motley crew drummer Tommy Lee. A marriage that yeah. would last the ages and never had any problems. Ooh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I learned about all of this last night. I knew very <laughs> little about Pamela Anderson. I knew, I thought she was a porn actress, but apparently um, she wasn't. She just did Playboy. Yeah, she did Playboy um, a few times. Uh, she was mostly, and, when this came out, <clears throat> I think she was mostly known for Baywatch. I think Baywatch started before this. Let me yeah. verify that claim. <laughs> I did a little bit okay, of research. Yeah, 89. Yeah, it did. So it did, I did a little bit of research before this, before the recording, and yeah, I saw like all the Baywatch stuff, and she was apparently in the new one too, just not as the same character. Yeah, she she appeared on Baywatch, that's what she was known for before this. There's a Baywatch reference in Tank Girls, so, you know, some nice synergy there. <laughs> um, yeah. 
She's not a good actress. Like, no, I hate to be the one to say it. Because, you know, I, I, I like it when you can kind of look back at something that was made fun of in its time and go like, you know what? This person didn't get a fair shake. Uh, Pamela yeah. Anderson's not a good actress. <laughs> no, she isn't. I, 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 I I, feel, I do feel a little mean saying this, but I think she was casted for a very specific reason, and you all know what that reason is, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I've i seen characters like her before, and they make them kind of, you know, they make them a little bit more playful. I, I don't know. She just seemed so bored the entire time. There's a scene where she's saying goodbye to the person who helped her run the nightclub. Like, it's like the final time they're ever going to see each other. And he hugs her, saying, I'm going to miss you. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to miss you too. And it all, I don't, I think it's supposed to be sincere, but it almost comes off as sarcastic. Like she doesn't give a shit about this person at all. It's supposed yeah. to be this wholesome moment, but no, it's just, there is no, there's really no personality to any of it. Yeah. Uh, to, to be fair, I don't know how much of that we can pin on Pamela Anderson and how much uh, is the director. It is is the direction oh, sh- because oh for sure she they they might have told her like ah oh, you know play it kind of deadpan play it kind of unenthused but oh yeah she definitely goes too far she doesn't give a good performance in this movie I think we've covered in previous episode uh, the previous one just like M Night Shyamalan like yeah a bad director can like make a good have a good actor give a shitty performance. Uh, cause there's good actors on Shyamalan movies that do a shit job. <laughs> that said, there are uh, some really good actors in this movie. Um, you yeah. got Clint Howard, uh, as, as, I guess sort of the, uh, oh shoot, what's that actor's name? Ah, oh, god damn it. The guy, the, the weird dude from Casablanca. I know who you're talking about. He's the one with the transits. He's the one with the... And then he's the one with the um, contact yeah. lenses. Yeah, Peter Lorre. That's the one. I love Peter yeah. Lorre. I love Clint Howard, yeah. too. I've said before, no yeah. no movie with Clint Howard and it can be all bad. Um, <laughs> he, I, m- I mentioned this when we were watching it. I, I don't know him from a ton of stuff. Uh, I know he, you've mentioned he was in the Dr. Seuss movies, and I do recognize him, but he also has a recurring role on My Name is Earl, and I really like his My Name is Earl character. I've been rewatching that lately. Udo Kier plays Barb Wire's, like, right-hand man. Um, mm-hmm. I like seeing Udo Kier. Um, yeah. He's, he's decent. He's, he's more lively than fucking Pamela Anderson. Yeah, I thought I thought he was fine. Um, who plays her brother? Oh, jeez. Because um, I didn't think he was very good either. Uh, he wasn't as bad as Pamela Anderson. Yeah. But... Uh, shit. I don't know. I can't find it on IMDb. Um, I just kept forgetting that he was there because he would always just be bi- up until like the last ten minutes, like he has in the movie. Before, um, before, uh, you know, I guess we're we're definitely talking spoilers with these movies. He dies. Uh, he's just kind of sitting at a bar the whole time. (laughs) Yeah. And occasionally talking to someone. And then in the last ten minutes, he actually does something and dies. Yeah. Uh, Jack Noseworthy is the actor's name. I have not seen him in anything else. Uh, I'm gonna butcher his name here. Tamara Morrison. Tamara Morrison. Um, is... Is the former love interest, uh, famous of course for playing uh, Jango Fett in Star and all the clones in Star Wars. Yeah, but he's he's a really good actor. I've seen him in a lot of stuff. I, I really like him in Once Were Warriors. It's a good yeah. Movie. This script, this script absolutely gave him nothing to work with because it's not a good. It's it's not a very good character. Neither yeah. him or the girl he's with really have much of a chance to shine i feel like you know the parallel to casablanca which i understand it might be a little unfair to compare a comic book movie to one of the most beloved movies ever made (laughs) but the movie is trying to do it intentionally so i'm going to yeah um the uh they really give you time to get the note to know you know the two that like you know his former lover and her what and her husband old husband when they show up they have like a lot of scenes with those two 
you really get to know them while these two it's just they're kind of on the run and it cuts to them occasionally and then just near the end they show up and i felt like i didn't really get a chance to know either of them at all yeah um yeah i mean i think he does a decent enough job but he also he has like nothing to work with in this movie yeah um yeah i don't blame him for that that's mostly on the script yeah i would uh, i would agree um, I like, what, there's one character in the movie I do like, and it's like the dumbest character in the whole film. What's the fat guy's name? Like the really fat oh, villain? Uh, Big who plays Fatso. Him? Big yeah, Fatso, big, played by Andre who, Rosie Brown. There is, like, that is the point, like, the one character that feels like he is in a comic book movie, because he is so <laughs> over the fucking top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's... He he's a very funny character because he they have him in like this big old like like he's being carried around by a dump truck, <laughs> yeah. and and then of course he blows up and that's very hilarious. Oh my god, that was like the one part of the movie that made me laugh like really fucking hard because <laughs> it's it's paced so well too. It's like paced very comedically. <laughs> Like, it was actually well done. I don't even think it was, like, laughing at a movie for being bad. I think that was intentionally supposed to make you laugh. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very funny character. I I wish there were more, like, weird characters like that in this movie. Because you get a lot of those in, like, you know, sci-fi dystopian movies. You get, like, the weird, very unique characters. And I don't think this movie did much of that. I think they're all very forgettable with the exception of him. The sheep of police was okay, but they really don't show him too much either. Like again, comparing it to Casablanca, you know, our, you know, our main character and, uh, I'm forgetting the names. I just saw it. Sorry. Um, the, uh, main character and the French officer, you know, they have a lot of conversations. You, when you first meet the French guy, you're, you might be a little bit conflicted about him because, you know, just some of the stuff they're talking about, it's hard to tell if he's like a good guy or not. And, Really, by the end of it, it's a little bit more complicated in that he's a person who does good things and bad things. Yeah. Um, and then this movie, it's just like, yeah, I guess the, I guess he was in at the end. He helps her out. So I guess he's a good guy. Yeah, he is. He is kind of raiding. He's, the, he's kind of arresting people for no reason at the beginning of the movie. So that just that yeah, you know, the French guy didn't. He's, he's a much flatter character in this movie is not as much nuance. It's just kind of, oh, he's, he's you know, doing his job, but when push comes to shove, he's going to help barbed wire. Yeah. I feel like uh, the other one, it's just like, um, I feel like with this guy too, it's just, he is kind of trying to escalate things in certain scenes, while the French guy, he just seemed to kind of want to de-escalate anything he possibly could. Yeah. Uh, he just didn't want to deal with it, basically, while yeah. this guy is like stirring shit up in the first scene he's introduced. I don't know. I, I and mean, you know, you, at that point you can say like, well, yeah, it is trying to do something new. It's not trying to be one. It's not a Casablanca remake entirely, but it's just like, I don't know, in terms of like likability, you know? I mean, like you said, it's kind of unfair to compare this to Casablanca, even though they did it to themselves, right? Yeah. They, they tried to retell the Casablanca story, but... It's it's just like infinitely lamer in every way. Like it's this is a dumb action movie that just borrows the plot from one of the most famous movies ever made. Yeah, and I do feel a little bad to compare it as a result. It's just like it's like whenever I think it's now this like awkward situation with like when whenever there's a character that doesn't work, I can immediately tell you how to make the character work. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, is like yeah. we have the good version of barbed wire. Right? We, Do you remember the? We don't have that for every movie. Do you remember that fucking episode of BoJack with the fish director who's like, so we're not making Casablanca. And Bojack interprets that as him admitting the movie they're making isn't going to be very good when he literally just means we're not making Casablanca. <laughs> that feels like what the director of this movie was doing or something like that. <laughs> it's probably the same guy. It's pro- David Hogan, that's probably the fish from Bojack. Uh, what else has he made? I've seen... 
Oh, he, I don't know. Oh. He was like a assistant director on Batman Forever. <laughs> I, I can see that. He hasn't really done much else. Honestly, in terms of directing, it's not that bad. It's not that good, but it's not uh, that bad. Like I think it's pretty well shot, well made. There's a level of technical yeah. competence to this movie. For, for sure. I, honest to God, it might like in terms of like all of the pieces cinematography editing all of that it might be the most competent thing we've watched on the show so far um Um, yeah yeah i think i would agree to that um because there's not really any point where it's like really there's not really any like awful decisions in it i actually will get to tank girl when we get to it i i do like the way that film's presented in a lot of areas but then i have some pretty big problems too so it's like this one I don't think it hits the highs of some of the fun things in Batman and Robin or Tank Girl, but it has like so like the problems that it has are so less noticeable. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I uh, think it's pretty consistent all the way throughout. I, I think it um, knows what it wants to be, and it is accomplishing that. Yeah, and I couldn't get as into this one because it's like it's almost like. It might be, and I, it's hard for me to say this, especially since we're still comparing the two, like we're going to reveal the winner at the end. It's hard for me to say this for sure. It might be the best thing we've talked about on the show. Just completely objectively, it might be the best one. Yeah, the most well-made thing we've looked at on the show. Yeah, but it also, to me, was a lot less fun to watch as a result. I know that you had a good time, like I had some fun with it. And yeah. I, it's not like I did it at any point. But most of the movie was just going in one ear and out the other because it was just, yeah, okay, it's not that bad. So there's nothing really fun to laugh at. Honestly, the parts of it that stand out the most are the parts that aren't Casablanca. <laughs> yeah. Right. When they're yeah. When they're breaking the mold, when they're doing like these big action scenes or talking to weird characters like Big Fatso, it's like yeah, this is the memorable parts of the movie. The Casablanca parts. A, I've seen it before, much better, and B, even if I hadn't, it's just really boring in this movie. Yeah. And so, yeah, it just kind of like almost feels like a standard, boring, maybe five. I, I would go lower than five just because some of the acting's really bad. Um, but it's just kind of like a standard movie, you know? It. Um, I don't. I don't think it hits enough high points to be that memorable. Uh, um, I, I might disagree a little. I uh, I think it is weird enough, at least in concept, and and poor enough in some of its execution to like stand out in my mind a little. Yeah, I just I don't know. It, it's if I had to watch this or Garfield again, I would watch this, you know. But it's just like I don't know. I. I <laughs> I feel like with Garfield and Marmaduke, there was more things to make fun of, so I had more fun watching those two. But if I had to watch one of them alone again, I might still go with Barbed Wire, honestly. Fuck those two, but... <laughs> but, yeah, it's just... I, yeah, I wasn't having a lot of fun watching it. I wanted to, and then there were small a few parts where I did have fun, but, yeah, for the most part, I was just really bored watching it. I'm glad I got as much out of this conversation as I did, because I was afraid I wasn't even going to have a lot to say about it. Oh. Uh. I, I feel like there's plenty to talk about. We haven't even talked about, like, the big climactic action scene where the cars are made of nitroglycerin. <laughs> Where, like, one car, like, rear-ends another car and explodes. And yeah, then, that was pretty funny. Uh, a car and a forklift get dropped from a crane, and as soon as they hit the ground, they explode. And it's like, that would not explode! It would, like, be smashed all the bits... But it wouldn't explode the way it does in this movie. Uh, <laughs> it's just like an unnecessary amount of explosions. Yeah, <laughs> it was it, it was silly because it's just like yeah, if you like literally like <laughs> if you were at a fucking stoplight and and weren't paying attention, you just like lightly tapped like rear ended one of these cars, it would fucking explode. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. It was really silly. Uh, but that's kind of fun to watch. That, that, that is more entertaining that way. And it's also, you know, it's, yeah, it's a comic book movie. So they kind of want to 
be over the top. I wish they had gone more over the top. I wish it would have been like that throughout the whole movie, instead yeah. of just trying to be something that it's not. I definitely see where you're coming from when you say it's kind of boring. I think there are enough interesting moments to, like, hold my attention, but... Yeah. It definitely drags a lot in places. I'm very, I'm very, let's just say I'm very conflicted on this one, especially since, uh, especially since I'm trying to figure out where I rank all of these, because this one, it's like, I almost want to use the word objective, but then I have to remember stuff like some of the performances, and it's just like, or some of the writing, and it's like, can I really say it's objectively the best one? Is Batman and Robin better just for understanding what it is more and being really corny and over the top with it? Because that one was, that one had some neat sets too. I don't know. Yeah, I like, mean, t- I th- it, it certainly makes for an interesting discussion, because, yeah. like I've said, I, I think from a technical standpoint, it is well made, but... Yeah, the, I, I wouldn't disagree. The performances... Well, okay, it some of the performances are okay. I like most yeah. of the performances. It's Pamela Anderson is the weak link here. Yeah, I think her brother is kind of weak, too. I, I didn't really like him. That much. I know I already said that, but I, I didn't think he was that good. I, don't, I just feel like the script didn't give him that much to do. So yeah. Yeah, it's fair. I, I won't totally blame that on him. I do have this movie on VHS. I think that's yeah. worth bringing up. I have the VHS of this. And I I also have the, the Mill Creek Blu-ray, which might as well be the VHS because it has subtitles and nothing else. There's <laughs> There's not even, like, scene selection. It is the most bare bones Blu-ray I've ever seen. the The menu doesn't even move. It's a static picture of Pamela Anderson. It is the most bare bones Blu-ray release I've ever seen. Um, uh, and, and you mentioned that the oh, go ahead. The blurb on the back of the Blu-ray yeah. is identical to the blurb on the back of the VHS. Except that's what I was gonna point out. Yeah. <laughs> except between releases, they changed uh, Pamela Anderson Lee back to Pamela Anderson. Which, uh, fair. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you have anything else to say? Or do you want to move on? I don't, I don't think so. If you have anything else, go, go for it and maybe I'll have something to add on. But, uh. No. I, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm thinking like four out of ten for this one because, uh, maybe five. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me with this one because I didn't really like it, but I give it props because it got some stuff right. It definitely got a fair number of things right. I could understand why someone would like this movie. If someone liked it, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't think they had bad taste or anything. All right, yeah, uh, that's that's fair. I I definitely I think I enjoyed it more than you did. Um, yeah, but I I won't I won't argue that it's not the best thing. <laughs> um, no, it's my favorite movie. <laughs> Better than Casablanca. Better than Casablanca. Casablanca fucking ripped off Food Fight anyway. <laughs> uh, as as far as like bizarre halfway Casablanca retellings, I'd rank it higher than Food Fight, but lower than uh, Woody Allen's Play It Again, Sam. I've never seen that. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's about a a cinephile who's like obsessed with Casablanca. Okay, it's interesting. So it's kind of like The Human Centipede too. <laughs> Uh, yes, Woody Allen's The Human Centipede 2. <laughs> Opposing barbed wire. In the other corner, we have Tank Girl. Based on the comics drawn by Jamie Hewlett, uh, who, who did, the, did the art, did the animation for the gorillas. I'm not sure how involved he is in the songwriting, because it seems like he has some songwriting credits, but... He, he doesn't perform any of the music at the very least. Mm-hmm. But he does do the animation for the gorillas, which sort of raises the question, why wasn't this an animated movie? <laughs> but we, we can... Money. <laughs> we can uh, put a pin in that one. Uh, <laughs> set in the, the post-apocalypse, uh, the, the distant future of 2022... I mean, better than Barbed Wire, which takes place in 2017. That's something we probably could have mentioned. It takes place in 2017, and there's a second civil war going on. Thanks, Trump. (laughs) 
Tank Girl takes place in the distant future of 2022, uh, where it doesn't rain anymore. There, there was a big asteroid impact, and there's no more rain, and water is a in scarce supply. Um... Which I would like to point out was also a big plot point in Mad Max Fury Road. So, Tank Girl is kind of part of this resistance group who's stealing water from the big monopoly, Water and Power. They control all the electricity and all the water. And they've been stealing water from Water and Power. And so they get raided by Water and Power. And Tank Girl gets arrested. uh, Spends some time in prison. But she breaks out with the help of Another girl, Jet Girl. Uh, they, she's Jet Girl steals a jet. Tank Girl steals a tank, and they uh, escape. And then you know it's a like an all-out war with uh, water and power. Uh, they do kidnap uh, Tank Girl's like like a little girl that was in the commune she was living in. So they've got to rescue the little girl now. Interesting movie. Uh, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of charm to it. It's a charming movie. Now, I liked it in the sense that I liked Super Mario Brothers. Let's just be clear. I had fun. Uh, I have some pretty big problems with this movie that don't exist in barbed wire. But overall, I had I had a fun time watching this one because uh, it's very ridiculous. It's very over the top, and it just it keeps. Every, like, the setting and, like, the tone, not the tone, the setting just keeps changing. They're going all over the place. Every scene feels different from the last. There's this weirdest shit musical number. You get the kangaroos. It's just, it's just all over the place, and I love it for that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is pretty, uh, all over the place. Honestly, much like with Barbed Wire, I kind of wish they had leaned into being ridiculous a little more. It feels a little too tame. Because then it'll do something, like, really weird. Like, when it abruptly has an animated sequence in the middle. And it's like, that feels just a little out of place because the rest of the movie doesn't quite match that energy. Yeah. I wish the whole movie had that energy. I feel like a lot of it does have... Maybe not... That's, like, the most... The animated stuff is the most energetic shit in the movie. Um, just because it is like, it, honestly, God, it's really fucking good animation <laughs> and it's very expressive and it's very wild. Um, the, in the live action never gets quite to that, but what they do with the live action, there is like a lot of weirdness to it. Like I love the scene where the main one is making the one guy walk. I know it's from Die Hard, but making him walk over glass and he does it too. It's <laughs> just like, God that's the kind of villain we're having. Just like really stupid over the top. That's, I like, that's another thing I think is like too weird that it doesn't match the rest of the movie because uh malcolm mcdowell plays the villain uh the the owner of water and power and they play they lay it on thick with his character like he is (laughs) the most fucking evil dude (laughs) and it's he's a hologram at the end of it and i'm they, they cast malcolm mcdowell which like already you're you're really trying with a villain if you've cast Malcolm McDowell. He's one of those guys that just, like, shows up and plays super ridiculous villains. You know? Yeah. Tim, Tim Curry. Start a whole gang. Uh, <laughs> but, man, he's just, like, he's so over the top, and I think it would work if the rest of the movie were as over the top as he is. But I, I, I feel like he, he sort of stands out. He's, he's I don't... too much for the movie. He got the scene with the kangaroos when you learn that they're praying is going on to a bowling alley and jumping around in a circle. Like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of weird stuff in this movie. There's the one scene where they go to the construction site and say that they're (laughs) photographers and they're making a calendar. Then every picture they take is like an illustrated panel of a comic, which is the one. There's a ton of edits in the movies like that. And that's the one that I actually think is good and works in the scene. Whereas uh, when we get to like the technical side, I'll have something to say about that. I don't know. I felt like there was a lot of weirdness in this movie. I thought that a lot of the chase scenes kind of matched that crazy energy too. I don't know. I, I, I felt like it did kind of have this. I, I, it could have been more over the top, I suppose. But I felt like the whole thing was pretty over the top. I, 
I get it. I, I understand where you're coming from. It It is a pretty ridiculous movie. I just, I think I would have liked more, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're already going to go with this weird of a concept, why not go all out? But it, it, it was, like, consistent. I thought it was consistent enough. Certainly more consistent than barbed wire. Um, I think I might disagree. Oh, I don't at all. There's that I, fucking musical number two that has like actual consequences for <laughs> stopping the flow of the movie for that because the girl gets re they, they save the girl that they're trying to save that gets kidnapped. Then she gets abducted and then like they do a musical number for no reason and she gets abducted again <laughs> during the process. Yeah, I, I feel like Barbed Wire is a much more consistent movie. This is this is I mean, all over the I, place. I don't mean consistent as keep into one tone. I mean, like, the weirdness of it is more consistent. Just that element I is suppose. more part of it. Whereas Barbed Wire, it's, like, more near the end of the movie. That it kind of gets, like, over the top and crazy, which I kind of want out of a movie like this. I don't know. That's That there is subjective. That depends on what you're looking for. But... yeah. Um, both a silly comic book it, movie. It, I kind of, I kind of like it. It definitely is much sillier than Barbed Wire. Should we talk about like we didn't? We, I guess we like, we've kind of mentioned a lot of the cast. Should we like talk about them individually? Sure. Uh, Especially if how we talked about Pamela Anderson. How does this movie's lead do? Uh, Lori Petty is Tank Girl, and she's fine, I guess. Uh, Naomi, serviceable. Naomi Watts is Jet Girl, and I told you I think I'd rather see Naomi, Naomi Watts as Tank Girl. Partially because Tank Girl in the comics is a distinctly Australian character, and Naomi Watts is actually doing the Australian accent in this movie. She's mm-hmm. one of, like, two characters who has an Australian accent. <laughs> yeah, um, I think she could have done that. I just, Lori character. Petty is very kind of cutesy about it and and that's not really tank girl uh the you you said it and i was thinking it when you said it she's a lot like uh harley quinn in like the current dc movies yeah um she's if that character annoys you this character will annoy you too yeah um which i mean i was i i can live with it i can I can say, like, okay, this is a, a separate interpretation, but I would rather see, like, an angrier, more punky tank girl. And I, I think Naomi Watts would do a better job in that role. To be fair, uh, part of it is on the writing. Like, the, the writing gives yeah. her a lot of very cutesy moments, and it's like, I don't know, I'd rather have a character that's, like, angrier, but also, like... Like, she she knows what she's doing is ridiculous. Yeah. I, especially, you know, if you want to comment on that, her, it's like her, she has like a family, you know? I don't know if she's like actually like married or anything like that, but, you know, she has a boyfriend and there's two kids that she's looking after. And the boyfriend and one of the kids are dead. Yeah. You, you never see them again. And she doesn't seem upset about it. <laughs> yeah. Um there's not a scene of her mourning or if there is, it went by so fast that I don't even remember it. Um, she is trying her best to save her. You know, she clearly cares because she's trying to save the girl throughout the entire movie, or at least for most of the movie. Um, but yeah, I don't, <laughs> you know, aside from, from that, like, yeah, there, there doesn't seem to be any mourning for these people that she just lost. Yeah. I think about like, uh, Hell Comes to Frog Town. That's an interesting movie. I should show you that one. Um, Hell Comes to Frog Town. It's got uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. And he. there's like a point in the movie where someone's like, do you take anything seriously? And he's like, I did. And then they blew it up. And then it's like, that's the type of character that like Tank Girl should be. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I I am doing this crazy, silly stuff Sort of as a coping mechanism, because, you know, everything's gone to shit. I think Lori Petty does fine. She, I don't hate her. She, she is perfectly acceptable in this role. Naomi Watts yeah. also very good in her role. Yeah. 
I thought I liked the kangaroo group a lot too. I love that fucking ice tea is one of them. Yeah, ice tea is one of the the kangaroos. Vill- you already said it. Villain is over the top and fun, and I don't know. I I enjoyed him. <laughs> he is Malcolm uh, McDowell. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and Iggy Pop makes a cameo in the movie. He's in like <laughs> one scene. I I definitely enjoyed tank girl like the character tank girl more than barbed wire but i definitely think she's a character that's worth criticism because it's yeah it, I, I, it's, but it's, there's a personality at least yeah i i definitely like her as a character far better than barbed wire maybe they should have had laurie petty in that movie too <laughs> maybe um yeah ice tea is one of the kangaroos and the the lead kangaroo Played by Reg E. Cathy. I really like him, too. He's a very chill dude. I I like how chill the the kangaroos are. They're, they're into, like, Taoism and... Yeah. Like, like th- there's some joke about them not using guns because they're peaceful. Even right before they go fucking raid water and power and kill, like, yeah. a bunch of the guys there. <laughs> yeah and they try to like throw in some like decent comic relief too like it's not it's not that funny but it's like there's like you know there's the scene where she's trying to have them try ha- trying to like uh naimo watts character jet girl's trying to have them uh communicate with with the enemy and he keeps mishearing everything she's saying because it's all like terms he's never heard but heard before <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they're like trying to throw in some quirkiness at the characters. You know, they're trying to make it like a like you know, <laughs> trying to make them funny, lovable, funny, lovable group. Um, I will say that they're maybe thrown in a little too late in the movie because there is one that dies at the end of the film, and it's supposed to be this like really you know emotional moment where they're basically their leader, like the leader member of the kangaroo is the one who's always like speaking for him. He's gone. But, like, you introduce them in the final act. If you want that to have an impact, it might be good to introduce them yeah, much earlier. It's, it's weirdly like a Tank Girl origin story. And yeah. I don't think Tank Girl is a character that really necessitates an origin story. Because, like, I've only read, like, the very first comics. Like, the very oldest comics. And there's no backstory in those. It's just, like... There's a girl in the post-apocalypse who has a tank. That's the plot. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we we might be a little overdue for another Tank Girl movie. I think now is like the perfect time to make a new Tank Girl movie. Yeah, I, I would. Honest to God, after watching this, I'd definitely watch another Tank Girl movie. Because I, think it's uh, it's it's kind of a fun little world they have with it. Yeah, and I think with movies like. Uh, Deadpool and the Suicide Squad, and and maybe a little more to the point, movies like Psycho Goreman, that are just about these, like, irredeemably irresponsible characters just running around committing violence. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I want out of a Tank Girl movie. I want something like Deadpool or the Suicide Squad. Yeah, you can have, like, and you can, like, they can, instead of having, like, the makeup on the kangaroos, they can do a CGI kangaroo jack and throw him in there. No, no, they should keep the makeup <laughs> exactly as it is in this movie. They they should, they should. No, the makeup, honestly, wasn't that bad, because they do look creepy, but it, it's, like, it, yeah. it fits the tone. They're supposed to look deformed. Yeah, like, they show up, and at first I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of, like, gross makeup, and then you're like, yeah, but it fits the movie, and I'm like, no, you're right. It it fits the movie. It goes with yeah. the, 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 everything else that's going on. It's kind of ugly, but it it works. And it, it, they are able, you know, the honest to god, give Ice T some credit. He like a lot of them are able to like kind of work with the makeup too, where they don't like if they change their expression, you can see it. It's not like you know the fucking cat in the hat makeup in that movie. You can see like Ice T getting pissed off. Like you can see it in the face. The makeup isn't poorly done. Yeah, and the sets aren't poorly done. The costumes aren't poorly done. They've got little uh, animatronic ears that I think yeah. work very well. Like they they emote with their ears pretty decently. Yeah, I think that there was some real effort put into it. 
Sure. Uh, especially when you look at the animation, like there's tons of stuff that's being done behind the scenes for this film where you can tell someone's heart was in this. There, It, it isn't like a completely soulless movie. Yes. One thing I think we should note here, uh, Tank Girl asked Ice-T Kangaroo like what he was like before he was a <laughs> kangaroo and he says he was a cop. So I choose to believe this is a sequel to Law and Order. Yes, and his kangaroo name is very similar to his like actual name, right? Like you mentioned that. What was his name again? His, his name is T Saint. T Saint <laughs> has to have the T in there, you know. Yes, because he is. Don't you dare forget. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, uh, I do kind of wonder why it wasn't an animated movie. I get that it's probably cheaper to make a live action movie, but still, it couldn't have been that cheap to make this movie. Yeah, um, there is a lot in it. There's a lot of sets, and there's, uh, it's it's like pretty twenty five. It's million, pretty flashy. Twenty five million dollar budget. Um, um which is there is another thing. Kind sorry, of low. I guess it was the mid nineties. I guess that's pretty decent for the nineties. It only made four million worldwide, so this was a pretty big bomb. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, $21 million down the drain. Another thing we talked about, and I don't know how big of an issue this was in the 90s per se, so I don't know if this argument works. Um, it would require research, but adult animation is another thing. Yeah, yeah, um, I see that too. Because studios do not trust adult animated films. And it, honestly, I, I hate to say it, in some cases I kind of understand why. I think it could work. I think it absolutely could work, and I actually... You know, I think Japan has kind of proven it ha it can work because because I mean they made like a ton of like adult animated films that do have done well. Yeah, like something like Anomalisa came out and that was a huge flop. Now maybe that's more so because of the subject that it's taken on than yeah. the fact that it's an adult animated movie. I love that movie and I wish more people would check it out. By the way, but but you know it, it's like a lot of the time when it does happen, it's being done by a truly passionate director because it's not the most marketable thing yeah. and as a result you don't get a lot of them and that yeah. might impact like whenever you say oh why wasn't this animated it's, be it's because it's for adults and yeah studios I mean, think animation's just for kids i i kind of understand it i kind of get why it isn't animated uh like like on a studio head level if we're talking yeah. about trying to make a good movie i think it should have been animated if we're talking about making money oh yeah no, uh, yeah, I get, I get why they did it this way. Yeah, and to be and to be clear, um, I I do think even if it's like you can understand why they went a certain way, you can still criticize it because at that point you're not even criticizing the filmmakers; you're criticizing the studios for not letting the filmmakers make the proper movie. Yes. Um. Um. Still, still worth criticizing. So something I think we should mention. Uh, the movie opens on drawings from the comic, and then at various points throughout the film, there are other abrupt shots from the comics. Or, I don't even think, so. some of these shots I think were drawn for the movie, but, you know, they're Jamie Hewlett's art style. It's, it's a drawing, not a live-action thing that just pops up throughout the movie. And I think it's... Yeah pretty poorly implemented honestly it's so it is it doesn't the like i said the one scene where it's like a photo shoot it kind of makes sense because it's like oh they're taking yeah. pictures then it flashes onto the screen everywhere else it just feels so weird and out of place and there are movies that have implemented that well you you know you'll see like scott pilgrim there's like little they'll like throw in quick little frames that are illustrated just to kind of like add a little bit of emphasis to it kind of make it feel more like a comic book but it's like done subtly it works when they do it this movie just plasters it on the screen as if you're like in fucking premiere and you just like put one layer over the other and do nothing to it <laughs> yeah i i was gonna say the they're they're really leaning on like the comics right but i don't yeah. i don't think the comics were all that popular when this movie came out i still don't think they're very popular <laughs> um i never heard of her until you mentioned it for like last episode yeah so it's like is this for the comic book fans or not because it it feels like if you were gonna make a movie for the fans you'd have just made it animated it right feels like someone who's confused <laughs> 
yeah, it, or doesn't really understand maybe, what they're doing, and then uh, it maybe, and then doesn't overthink it. Maybe it's a conflict between like the the writers and director in the studio. Maybe the writers and director are trying to make something for the fans, and the studio's like, "No, make it more broad, make it more marketable, make it appealing to today's youth." And so you kind of end up with this mismatched film. Um, it's directed. It's directed by Rachel Talele, who also directed Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Mm, what? So this one was directed by a female director? Yes, female director. Ooh. I think it kind of shows that this one was directed by a female, but Barmore is directed by a male. Go ahead, sorry. I didn't have anything else. Go ahead and say whatever okay. you were going to say. I just wanted to note, uh, I just wanted to note the director. Okay. <laughs> the uh technical side of this movie they're um just like not even all technical like i mean like the sets like i said the sets and costumes are pretty nice in this movie um there's some really nice looking shots in it too not all you know there's you know there's some occasion you'll get a weird looking shot but it's a fairly well-made movie i think the editing kills a lot of it though i think it is a movie with like in some areas it's competent in other areas it's terrible yeah I mean, it's take it's like Bohemian Rhapsody took fucking notes from it. it it's horrible okay. sometimes. But but some of the things that like pass in this high energy weird ass comic book movie don't work in Bohemian Rhapsody. That I, I I'm just talking about with how some of the scenes cut like really fast up to the point where your brain can't even process what you're watching. I think. Um, I think to some degree that kind of matches the energy of the the comic though. It it is a very disorienting comic, but I feel like the 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 editing in this movie is not totally deliberately disorienting. Cuz you not... can do you can do like disorienting editing that works where you're like, "Whoa, what just happened?" and then it's like, "Oh, it becomes clear afterwards." They don't really have, like, the moment of clarity. It's sort of all just visual soup. I hear what you're saying, but what I'm saying is it's still a, it's still done to the point where it's obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not like that in every scene. You can still make something really energetic and not be that fucking obnoxious. And I think that the we've mentioned this already but yeah the way they include like comic panels into the editing it's just not good and let me like make another thing clear um bad editing doesn't always necessarily come from a bad editor sometimes it comes from bad communication between a director and an editor or disagreements between a director and an editor because once it comes to a disagreement it's going to go the director's way um it might not even be the director it could be producers just like um yeah editing is always very hard to figure out because a good editor a good editor is an editor who has a director who's willing to let them do their job uh yeah tarantino and his editor are a great example of that they've he's been very outspoken about that yeah yeah uh, the, the editing i think is probably the weakest element to this yeah. movie not that the it's, writing is great either, but it gets the job done. I think the editing is something that like genuinely takes its like several steps back where in terms of like competence, like, you know, just from a technical side, I feel like in a lot of ways barbed wire and tank girl are on the same page where like, yeah, they're pretty you know, they're fairly well shot. There's some nice looking sets there. It's not horrible. But then I don't really think there's like bad editing in barbed wire. It's fine. Um, there's nothing like especially great to comment on. There's nothing like above and beyond in that movie, but it's it's all competent. While this one is trying so hard to be cool, but just it just misses the mark a lot. Yeah, because it doesn't really feel like they knew what they 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 didn't really have an idea. They were just like uh, plaster this on the screen. Okay, cut really really fast in this scene. And again, not every scene does that. There's some that are fine. Um, it's not the entire movie, but it's just the when it does have the bad editing, it's it's so stand out to me. And I really didn't like it. So it's like, I almost could, like, on a technical scale, I could almost put it on the same scale as something like Barbed Wire. But I, I do actually think Barbed Wire is better made than this. Because just, I feel like a lot of stuff was fucked up in post-production. 
Yeah. Um, I I think the thing I will give Barbed Wire much more than I will give Tank Girl. I think Barbed Wire knows what it wants to be, and it is that. I think Tank Girl is a little all over the place, both in terms yeah. of, like, tone and story and in terms of, like, what it wants to be. Like, I, I don't think it commits quite as well to any specific idea. Yeah. But... It just wants to be a fun adventure movie, and but it's also nice to have, like, a theme to go with that adventure, you know? Yeah. Have a purpose. And this one's just kind of, like, uh, throw a bunch of fun shit in. And to be fair, I had a good time with it, but that's why I'm saying it's, like, enjoyment on a Super Mario Brothers movie level, because really, at the end of the day, what is it all build up to and that's not really anything <laughs> yeah yeah uh i i think we've reached the portion of the evening where we have to make a decision do you have anything else to yeah. say about tank girl um not uh, i think i think i got everything um i i like it but it's it's very flawed yeah that's a very fair analysis of this movie i'll let you vote first I had a really hard time with this one. I, I seriously was going back and forth because I want there to be a difference between my own personal enjoyment and what is objectively better. I think I am going to go with Tank Girl still just because I can't sit down and say that I liked Barbed Wire. I really can't. I can say that I liked Tank Girl. Um, if there was zero, like, if the production value of Tank Girl, like, if it, there was just nothing there at all, if it was, like, all poorly done then even if I enjoyed the writing more, even if I enjoyed the performances more, I would give it to Barbed Wire. Um, but I, I still think that it gets enough right. You got some cool animation. You got some cool shots. Um, I just, as a whole, I like it more. Um, I think that objectively Barbed Wire does some stuff better, but I think that this one is a lot more fun to watch. And it's not so poorly made that I I think it, it's not... It, like, Barbed Wire isn't, is not so much better made than it that I think that it has like such a higher place up. I think it's pretty even, but I like, but I had more fun with tank girl. So I'm giving it the tank girl. I don't know. That was a whole tangent, but <laughs> it was hard. It was hard for me to pick. I, it was actually really close this time. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think this one is pretty close. Um, I'm also going tank girl. So Ooh. I, I just, I, I think I liked Barbed Wire more than you did, but at the same time, Tank Girl is just... It's a more entertaining movie. And and it's not like there's anything on the technical side that makes me not like it as much as Barbed Wire. Like, like it's, it's not so shitty that I'm like, okay, Barbed Wire is obviously a better made film. Let's give it to Barbed mm -hmm. Wire. Yeah. And it's it's unanimous once again because the the public has also voted for Tank Girl. Uh Neat. again, not a very close matchup. That's it's weird that it's it's weird to me that the closest one has been Dragon Ball Evolution versus Last Airbender because I think Dragon Ball Evolution is just like very obviously better. <laughs> I, I I think it I think you got Dragon Ball fans and Avatar fans in the mix then. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, because if I was a Dragon Ball fan I might hate evolution more. Uh, um, it was eighty six percent for Tank Girl versus fourteen percent for Barbed Wire with sixty three votes. Um and and some some comments of like it, it seems like most of the people who picked barbed wire were like, yeah, but Pamela Anderson got titties though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I read. I, I I I checked it pretty early to when you posted it, so I don't think I've seen all the new ones. But yeah, that was just my like very funny to me going through the comments and like the first two I saw side side. One was saying, uh, oh, it's got to be barbed wire because Pamela Anderson. And then one person say, oh, it's got to be Tank Girl because of Pamela Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that just that was just very funny to me. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know why. Uh, how, how, I, I didn't know why the hate where the hate for Pamela Anderson was coming from. Then I watched her performance and understood it. Yeah. Power to moan barbed wire because Pamela Anderson and Udo Kier. 
Adam Stewart tank girl because barbed wire has Pamela Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I uh, you teach their own. Tank girl wins. Yay. If you like, if, you, if, right, if any of you like bar, uh, Pamela Anderson in that movie for reasons, any other reason, please, please let me know in the comments. All right. Uh, be, I won't, I won't, I won't be mean. Genuinely curious. Next time on Hollow Victories, we've got, I think, a, a very interesting one. Because we've started with some more obvious matchups, and I think rightfully so. I think if you're going to do this show, you should start with some of the obvious ones. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing this one, number one, because it's going to be fun. And we've already got our Christmas double feature picked out, and our Christmas double feature is going to hurt... So let's do a fun one before we hurt ourselves. Number two, I realized everything we've talked about so far has been based on something else. It was comic books, and then comic strips, and then animation, and then comic books again. So we're going to do two original movies, two <laughs> very recent uh, stories mm -hmm. of precocious child prodigies that both get derailed in the exact same direction. <laughs> It's uh, 2017's Book of Henry versus <laughs> 2019's Serenity. The Matthew McConaughey one, not the Firefly movie. Have you seen the Firefly movie? Ah, uh, Firefly? I don't think so, no. I, I liked that Serenity, um, even though I've never seen Firefly. I have seen the movie, but... I. I almost watched the Serenity that we are gonna watch, <laughs> uh, but I just, I just something came up today. I was gonna watch it, and then I never got to it. Book of Henry, I, I knew it was coming one day because you've told me about how hilariously bad of a movie it is. Um, I knew it was coming one day. I just didn't know when. Because just as a refresher, I, I, I know what the Christmas special is. I, I, because I guessed it. Um, but we also did kind of talk about it beforehand. To be fair, but, but. Just as a reminder, every every single time Matt reads the <laughs> reads off the next two movies, it's news to me too because I asked him to not tell me. <laughs> I have I have run all of these matchups by you, right? So I at least have your okay yeah. to do these episodes. It's but... okay if you go behind my back one day. I'll I won't say no to anything. All right, great. Let's watch Sallow versus uh, Cannibal Holocaust. All right. Well, I I already saw those recently <laughs> enough. We can just record the episode. <laughs> uh, until next time, for my co-host Movie Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. See you in the next one. Peace.